Yeah, hey developers, today we are looking at Vue 3 and how you can use that in an existing application and how you can use a Vue to an existing application using this script tag. We're also looking at a couple of the other plugins that are available out there. And so we're just going to take a, a real quick look at Vue 3 and see how you can use it today. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. I'm a big Vue.js fan. So if you like JavaScript, things like that, make sure you stick around. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out. I have a new course called Vue 360. It just came out and it's basically from Vue Newbie to Impressively Job Ready where I go over everything you need to know for Vue. It's kind of a front to back deep dive in and Vue.js. It's a five week program where I go everything from looking at the Vue lifecycle, props events, but then we get into Vuex, SSR and animations, how you use Vue 3 in your apps today. API communication, REST, TypeScript. I know a lot of people are looking at how do we do TypeScript, especially with Vue 3 apps. Authentication deployment. Then we even go into how to upgrade to Vue 3. Composition API will be a big focus. So a ton of information. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know, if you go to viewcourse.tech or you click on the link in the description below, you can sign up, you can enroll in the course. I would highly recommend it. It's pretty immersive. I'm really proud of this. This is the first Vue course I've ever created. And uh, it, it's going to be awesome. So yeah, make, you, make sure you check out viewcourse.tech. Check it out. And uh, yeah, join me on the adventure. Okay. So if you remember from my last video, I had talked a little bit about Vue Next. And I talked about how this is essentially the alpha version of Vue. This is what's going to be coming for Vue 3. And there's a few ways that you can run Vue 3 today. And the most, the, the ones I mentioned here is you can use the Vue Composition API plugin. So what this does is you install this into your existing Vue 2 app and you get basically the Composition API in your Vue as if you were a Vue 3 app. I also mentioned that if you look at the readme here, there's a Webpack single file component support a library, actually app, kind of just for testing things out that Evan Yu has given us. And so it's a minimal Webpack setup for Vue 3. My last video we went over and, and used it for a little bit and, and looked around and poked around it. It looked pretty neat. I forgot to mention one other person in the comments mentioned that there is another way. There is a Vue CLI plugin for Vue Next. So this Vue CLI plugin is for to trying out for Vue 3. So there could be some bugs and undocumented behavior differences between Vue 2 and Vue 3, but essentially you can do view add view next in an existing view CLI project. So if you have a view two project, you just use view add view next, and then you'll get some of the view three. Essentially, you'll have view three inside your app as well. So this is yet another way of getting view three today. And from what I've been told, it works pretty well. So that's uh, that's good to know. Now, one thing I had mentioned is this view next. You can. If you look at the contribution guide, guide, you can actually run this yourself. And I wanted to show that today in case you want to be bleeding edge and run it. What we really want to do is here, this one right here, view, the public facing view build. So you can build for this. So, so to do that, uh, you would do it like this. You first need to grab this repository. So you go to clone, grab it here, and then you would go into your terminal and you just type git clone, you paste it, and that will go ahead and download the whole view next app, the latest version. I went ahead and already did that, so now I have, if you look in this folder, I have this view next. I'll try to type it right. And here it is here. So it just has a bunch of folders. And then what you run next is yarn, and yarn will go ahead, will install the dependencies. You then run yarn build view dash f global and what this does is it builds your yarn application or basically the view application using yarn and it'll target view which will build the development version of view and also the production version of view as a javascript file and so this is what that does and if i won't go ahead and hit enter here but that's essentially what it does after it builds it will have a new a new folder called packages and if you go to packages you can go to view and then dist and this folder will have 
a couple of different files in here. So one is the view.global.js file, and that is the development version of view. And the other one is the view.global.prod.js, and that's the, the production version of view. So in this case, as of this recording, this is alpha 4. So what then you need to do is you can copy this view global JS into its own folder and then import it in as a script. And then you can test it out. So let's do that. So I went ahead and created a new folder called view newest. I have my Visual Studio code open here. And I'm going to create a new file. Now, if you wanted to import this into an existing project, then you would already have all the files here that you would need. But let's say that you had a simple project that was just using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So here's index.html. And I'm going to use a little bit of Emmet. That's something that's built into, into Visual Studio Code here to go ahead and create a, just a real quick structure. So I'm going to call view 3 test app. I'm going to save it. Now, uh, typically, the way you add scripts in, especially for these things, you edit at the end of the body. And this is where we would want to put like the executable code. We can, up here, do the import in for the, the actual JavaScript file itself. So let's do that. So if we do script source, before we do that, typically, let, let's see how we would do it on a view 2 system as of today. So if we do HTTPS, we can do unpackage.com slash view. This is just a CDN that has a bunch of popular packages, one of them, of course, being view. And then what we do is inside here, we would have access to the view object. Now we do something like this, new view. Now remember, this is view 2 we're looking at first. So I'll change this title to view 2 app. And then you put el, and this is kind of the location of where it's going to mount on. It's where it's going to start up from. So I can, inside the body here, I'll create a div tag with id, and we can call this whatever we want, I know, app. But it has to be an id at least in this instance. So we'll do app, and I believe you do yeah, pound app to let it signify that it's a, that we're mounting on an ID called app. And then we have access to our data, data object, so we can just do return here. I don't know, let's have a hi that returns hello world. Maybe that's all we want. So now it should have mounted here, and we should have access to this hi. So now we have essentially created a view 2 app um, out of scratch. And if this was an existing app, all we needed to do is add the script tag to the top and then use new view and then pass in where it's going to mount on this EL. And then we can do everything we want. We can do data, objects, we can do our watchers, computed properties, everything like that. Counters. So now to actually run this, we'll just open it up inside our web browser. So we can use file open file and then we just need to double click on it cool now we see hello world so it seems to have worked and we always I like to always check the console make sure I don't see any errors or warnings and it does tell me that I'm running into uh, deployment or dev mode so here it is hello world cool so now we have basically an app using view 2 and we can add a button here and methods and do all sorts of things but now let's say we want to use view 3. So how would we do it with view 3? I'm going to delete all this because it's a little bit different. Okay. And I deleted the script type, but that's okay. So instead of having this unpackage.com, we're not going to use view 2. We're going to use view 3. So I'm going to just do view.global.js. So that should be loading view 3. And now I'll add my script tag to the end of the body. Which again, script. And I can just console log view since we are loading it up. And we can see what it's doing. So if we do this, go back to our app, refresh it, you don't see anything, but you can see here at the bottom we have all the stuff from view 3. We have base transitions, comments, fragments, all this stuff computed, compiled. We have something called create hook, create block, create app. This is something different than we did before. This is a difference between view 3 and view 2. View 3 has something called create app. Let's see if we can use that. I'll keep, I'll minimize this. We don't need that. 
So the way you initialize a view to app is a little different. So I'm going to create a div first. I'm going to create that ID equals app. And also I need to create a component. So I'm going to create a component called my component. Doesn't matter what it's called. And now this is going to be an object that looks really similar to what a component would look like. It looks like I have an extra J right here. So let's say I have a data object in here. And we'll do like this. And we'll return. We'll turn, I don't know, uh, Eric. Let's do name. Eric. And what we need to do here is we need to define a template. And this template is what's going to be rendered inside where we mount it for this component, where we're going to mount inside this, this component. So I'm going to put a div tag here. And it's going to render double, double curly brackets name. I'm going to put my name is this. I don't know, maybe I can make an h3 tag instead. Let, let me make an h1 tag. Cool. Now, we don't actually have anything happening yet, so we could do view. Now we're going to use create app. And if we remember correctly, look back here, there was a create app, camel case like this. And now we pass in the name of the component that we just created. So we do my component. And now we need to tell it where to mount. And this mount point is going to be where here is this div app. So we're going to, to use pass a string in here with this app. So let's see if that works. Cool. My name is Eric. See, it worked as we expected. So now we have um, this View3 app. And I don't know. I Actually, yep. It says you're running development build a view. So we remember we grabbed the this is the global one, but not the global prod one. And now we're essentially running view three, which is awesome. And so we should be able to do other things in here. So we could certainly create multiple components. We can import those components into here. Uh, one thing I like to do instead of having, there's a few ways you can deal with templates. We can actually create a template. Oops, that's the wrong type of template like this. And we can put an ID here and then call it. So we call this ID uh, my C. We'll call it um, I don't know, my temp. And then instead of putting this inside, interpret it like this with the back ticks, we can pop it in here and then have it put the single quotes and have it go into my temp instead which is like this. So now it should just see this template in here. Let me close this, make it a little bit easier to see. It should see it, and let's see if it works still. Cool, still works. That's good news. Now I do have a space problem here. Let's fix that and refresh it. All right, so now we have a space. Now it's working. Now it's a little bit easier to work with because we have templates. Now we know we can do a setup method since it is view three. So let's try to add a setup method. And we can do a ref. Well, what we want to do is we can define items in here and then make them reactive or not. So if we want to do that, we can do const, I don't know, count. And that's going to equal view dot ref and then we'll set it to zero. And then we'll return count. If I can spell that right, T. And now we should be able to use count in here. So I don't know. Let's see if it works. Count. Go back to our app, refresh it. Oh, count was accessed during render, but it's not defined in instance. Let me fix that. I think we actually need to turn this as an object. Cool. Now we see zero there. And if we set the default to five, four, now it's four. So let's create a button to increment it. 
increment count. And we're going to use our at click. And we're going to call it increment. And we're going to use the setup function again, so, you know, because why not? We're going to call it function increment. And we can even do this. We can do const inc increment. If we want to, we can use arrow functions here. And then we just need to access count dot value plus plus. Because remember, in, since we're using composition API, there's actually, this is a ref that has a count and a value. And now we just need to take this return and add an increment. Let's see if that works. Refresh it. Here's our button. Cool, so it seems to be incrementing the counter. Let's say we wanted to add in, I don't know, a computed property. So we can do that. Const double equals view.computed. Have an arrow function there, which then takes our count.value times it by 2. And now we have a new double one in here. We'll add it to the return. And I can do an h4 here, double amount. And we'll call it double. And now we can have it. Now double amount is 8. So every time I do it, it doubles it in the double amount right there. Cool. Uh, we can also, if we wanted to, instead of using view.ref, we can use view.reactive. Now, when we use this in in uh, using either the Composition API plugin or the View Next plugin, instead of using view.ref right here, you would import ref, you know, from view. But we don't need to do that here because we are just using it as a tag. We could actually combine this if we wanted to using Reactive instead. So if we do const state, we can do view.reactive. And then inside view.reactive, it has an object here. By the way, that's not const. There it is. And then we would have one called count. And then that would just be that would just be whatever we want to start off with. I don't know, zero. And then we can have a double here, which we do then view.computed. And it's essentially the same thing we had before, where it's this time uh, count view dot count times two and then that should if I spelt this right should give us what we needed so now we can go back into here and send out state oops this is actually supposed to be state dot count times two and now if we Increment the counter. Let's start it at one. Now, if we increment, it's not working because instead of doing count dot value, we're going to do state dot count plus plus, and we don't have to do dot value because it's reactive. And now, if we do it, it's working as it did before. Cool. So you can see here's a couple of ways of using View Three today. This one using tag, uh, a simple script tag inside your app. You could definitely even add this into your existing React apps or Angular apps or just your plain HTML, CSS, JavaScript apps today. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And also, if you have a time, make sure you check out viewcourse.tech. It's my amazing view course. I'm really proud of it. It's uh, five weeks worth of effort. And by the way, this is self-paced too. So if you don't have time, that's fine. Everything will be pre-recorded. You can go back and look at the lessons. And I'm going to cover a lot of this stuff I'm looking at today, all this new View Composition API, all these things. Yeah, check out viewcourse.tech. I'd love to have you join along. Thanks.